By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are once again showing you action from Vienna Geddon. We are in the beautiful Vienna, Austria. And we're going to look at a round number five match played at this event. We're still in the Swiss rounds. They have, I believe, six rounds in the Swiss. So I have one more match from the Swiss rounds next week. And uh, after that, we're going to dive into the top eight. And of course, I'm going to show you videos all the way up to the finals. But for today, like I said, a round five match between Alex and Roman. And Alex is playing a Setch Troll deck with a lot of blue in it and not a lot of black in it. And his opponent is Roman and Roman is playing a deck full of creatures. I kind of like his list. It's white, blue and green and I guess it's mid-range. He's playing with Sarah Angels, Suchis, Urnums, just a lot of stuff to turn sideways. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. It does mean, of course, that Alex's disc strategy may be really, really good against uh, this kind of opponent. Anyway, um, before I continue, I guess, with the deck techs, first a quick message from our amazing, great, lovely sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, we are back and ready to dive into those decks. I'm going to start with the deck of the player on the left. His name is Alex and he's playing Troll Disco. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Alex. So Alex is playing Troll Disco. So obviously the two cards that are quite important in this deck are Setch Troll and Nevenerals Disc. Setch Troll, of course, a 2-2 creature, one black and two, uh, sorry, one red and two, but becomes uh, a 3-3 three, three if you control a swamp. And of course, you can regenerate it for one black. And because you can regenerate it, it works really well with your Nevenerals Disc. Nevenerals Disc, of course, of course, an artifact for four that comes into play tapped. You can pay one, tap it, and then it destroys all artifacts, creatures. Um, actually, you don't even have to tap it. You can just pay one. It destroys a lot of stuff. It doesn't destroy lands, though, so they uh, you get to keep those. And because it destroys things, you get to regenerate. So this card works really well with those Sedge Trolls and also with those Mishra's Factories. Now, he's also playing with two Suchis main, which I kind of like because he's also playing with a Fireball. So if he times his disc activation right... He could pop the disc and then, of course, have mana to pay, uh, get mana from the Suchi and use that mana to pay uh, for the fireball, like create a giant fireball. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that he's going to do that. The interesting thing here is that um, he's also playing with four counter spells. So, it's really a controlling build and, of course, the mana drain. Um, so, really went uh, towards that more controlling route where you see some such troll decks maybe playing with a little bit more black, like animate deaths and stuff like that. We don't see that at all here um, in the list of Alex. We also don't see any Rook X. So he's really focusing on just that synergy between Nevenerals Disc and Sedge, and then just have a really controlling board, I guess, with the counter spells and perhaps burn your opponent out with your well-timed Lightning Bolt and, and your one single Fireball that can do a lot of damage, of course. So yeah, it's looking like a, like a strong list. And of course we are, like I said in the introduction, in the round five and this is kind of the top table that we're filming so i guess both of these players are doing really well at this tournament uh, talking about that let's take a look at the uh, deck of the opponent here of alex and that player is roman and this is the deck of roman so he's playing a lot of creatures here i've just called it uh, uh white blue green so work uh mid-range because that's kind of what it is right he's playing uh, a lot of creatures that are kind of heavy to cast like an urnum a sarah a suchi um, he's also playing with four Argovian Pixies. So I guess, look at that, 15 creatures, and I'm not even counting the Mishra's Factory. So there's a lot of potential here to just put a lot of creatures out early, put full pressure on and attack. But there's also this this other side of the deck where we see, again, four counter spells and a mana drain. Like a lot of players here at Vienna Cannon were playing the five counter spell suite. So you can kind of see how maybe that local community, kind of people start playing more and more counter spells 
which is interesting because what we see in the Netherlands, in my own old school scene, is that we see less and less counter spells and a bit more burn coming up. So here we don't see that as much. We see a lot of counter magic um, in both of these decks at least. Um, so yeah, we could be in for a serious counter war. We also see, of course, that white control package where he goes with four disenchants and four swords. He's not playing with a balance. And I think, again, I'm trying to guess what his decision process was. He's also not playing the balance in the sideboard. Maybe that's an option. He doesn't like balance. That could be it. Um, you know, but another more logical option for me would be that he doesn't like balance because his own deck is so creature heavy. So you usually end up killing your own creatures with your balance or you cannot use, use your balance because you have too many creatures on the board. So that's kind of what I think. I would still be tempted, to be honest, to play a balance because it's simply so good from when you're behind. For example, if he gets Mind Twist here, which, which can always happen, then if you top deck that balance or you find a demonic and look for the balance, it's a perfect way to get back. Of course, he's got Time Twister, which is also a ni really nice way to get back from a, from a Mind Twist. But that's kind of one of the reasons why I like balance so much. And it kind of, you sometimes just have these these moments in a match where it's just not going your way and you think, okay, this is a clear loss. And then again, you top deck that balance or time that balance, right? And boom, you're back in the game. The card is just so strong. Anyway, we're not going to see it today though, because both players are not playing with the balance. Uh, what we are going to see is, I think, uh, Roman probably going to slam down a lot of creatures, turn them sideways, and then Alex will have to respond to that. And of course, Alex has an Evanerals Discs. That's really good. But as we can see, Roman has answers to those. He can counter the disc away or even play a disenchant on the disc. Remember, Neverworld Disc comes into play tap. So if you're Roman, you've got some time. Um, I think we're in for an interesting match. Again, because both players have these very controlling components, both players play with five counter spells, basically, right? Because Mana Drain and a full playset of counter spells. So yeah, this can be a very, very, very exciting match. Talking about that, let's go to the match here between Alex and Roman in route number five of Vienna Geddon. Game number one, here we go. So on the right, we have Roman. He's on the play. Look at him go here. Mox Jet, Mox Sapphire, and a Mistress Factory. So he's able to start swinging in. On the left, we've got Alex. He's on Troll Disco. And uh, Roman, by the way, is on a white, blue, a green, kind of a mid-range deck. Plays a lot of creatures that maybe he can start casting early. There's the attack, pumping it up. Ooh, but there's a bolt, though. Both players playing uh, quite fast. I like it. But uh, yeah, that bolt... That is a bit unfortunate for Roman and, of course, perfect for Alex, kind of slowing him down here. Oh, missing a land drop. So he basically kept a hand with the factory and the two Moxen, which is understandable, but not finding any lands anymore. Just has to pass a turn. No white mana as well for him or a second blue to counter. So this is actually looking good for Alex now. I mean, he could consider just animating and attacking. Here we see a Black Lotus. There's a Setch, a second the Lotus into the Setch, wanting to put some pressure on that Setch is a 3-3 because of the Badlands, and now there's the pass. Oh, there's a Black Lotus. This could be big. It does have a Sarah Angel in hand that could be an option for him. Of course, we can't hear what he's saying. Maybe he's floating three white now, then we already have the answer. Are we going to see the Sarah Angel? There's the Sarah. So the Sarah Angel, you're hitting the board. A beautiful black bordered cardboard here, by the way. There's Swords to Plowshares taking care of the Sedge. Does mean three life, of course, for uh, Alex. Going to go up to 23. And that's, of course, the thing with Sedge Troll with regeneration in general. It's really good, but everybody playing with Swords kind of makes you feel like, okay, regeneration, not that great. Also, of course, Terror, another great uh, answer to a Sedge. And here we see an Evanerals Dix, so coming into play tapped. I do believe that uh, Roman has a Disenchant in hand, but he's missing that white mana. Oh, did he Did he find? Oh, that's a Tropical Island. Can't play it out, of course. Then at least he's got Counter Magic up. I'm a little surprised. I would have figured that perhaps Roman could have animated the Factory Attack with that as well, but maybe he doesn't want to, because now, of course, he can still use it as a blocker. But uh, yeah, this disc is going to do a lot of work. It's going to destroy the Sarah, but maybe more importantly, going to destroy both of the Moxen. And that's a problem for Roman, who's already missed several land drops. And of course, his uh, Mishra's uh, factory got toasted uh, in the early stages of the game. There we see a Suchi hitting the board. It's looking good for Alex. This is, uh, this is tough here for Roman. 
Needs to find at least white mana from the top. Does have the disenchant still in hand. And uh, remember, we also see counter magic there. And now there's a volcanic island. So Alex has, I believe, a counter spell in hand. And now he's got two blue. Who is going to animate? Not keeping the blue open. That surprises me a little. Does that mean that he's got a lightning bolt in hand? So Roman is going to animate. And blocks waiting for a response. Going to make it a 3-3, going to make it a 4-4, and they are going to trade here, so no Lightning Bolt. There's another Mishra's Factory, and we see two mana. Exactly, he can play those Argovian Pixies. Remember that blue mana from Alex was tapped, and this is pretty good. You know, Argovian Pixies on this board, it can block the Suchi for days, it can block the Factories for days. This is quite good. Of course, when you're Alex, all you need is one Bolt to get rid of it, but if you don't have that Bolt, it's the perfect blocker in this scenario. There's a City of Brass. And Alex here kind of in the tank, three cards in hand. I mean, he can swing in, but he can just block here with the Argovian Pixies. There's the attack. I mean, it makes sense if you also, exactly, if you attack with two, he can only block one, right? So that kind of makes sense. Exactly, blocking the Suchi. And he's probably going to take three damage here if uh, Alex decides here to pump the factory. I don't see why. Oh, look at that. Going to the graveyard, but that's not correct. Remember, all damage dealt by artifacts to the Argovian Pixies is reduced to zero. Here we see a time walk, so it's going to take an extra turn, but that Argovian Pixie needs to come back. Yeah, exactly. Okay. This is good. The play gets corrected. That's very important because it has a pretty big impact, actually. Anyway, it comes back. So that's good news for Roman. Now he can at least block the Suchi again. He's still on 17, pretty high up. If he just draws into that white mana, you know, life is not that bad once he draws that uh, white mana. Or, yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> I just, I keep trying to give hope to Roman, and then there's the bolt from Alex. That is pretty tough. Because now he's looking at 8 damage. Yeah, he's going to animate the other factory as well. Why not? Just uh, Or just the one. Wants to keep counter magic open, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. He can uh, pump it anyway, deal seven. I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Alex doesn't pump here. Passing the turn. I mean, it makes sense to keep the two blue open, of course, but he could have pumped it and deal an extra point of damage. Roman is now on 11. There's a City of Brass, has a counter spell in hand. This is the thing with counter magic. It's fantastic, but when you're behind, it's really bad. And especially if your opponent has a counter spell, which Alex does. So as soon as he's going to try to play the Disenchant, that, that's that one card in his hand, it's going to get countered away, and he doesn't have enough mana to have counter backup. So it's really unfortunate here for Roman. There we see a Soul Ring. So could use the Soul Ring to animate both, but of course there are some factories on the other side as well. Yeah, this is quite an interesting puzzle, actually, if you're Roman. Or sorry, if you're Alex. So he's going to animate just the one. He's going to attack. So we see a tap for two. He's going to take a damage. Go to 10. Probably here we're going to see the disenchant. I'm expecting a counter spell here. There's the counter spell exactly from Alex. And I mean, do you want to block and trade? You can. That's what he's going to do. Make it a 3-3. Going to pump it up. Exactly. So they're going to trade. But yeah, this is a problem for, uh, for Roman taking another hit. He's down to 6. Two factories. Well, actually, one factory. Ooh, this is a pretty okay draw. Finding the uh, Argovian Pixies. I mean, if you're Alex, you still have an attack lined up. You can deal two, put a, get him to four. But I think Roman can uh, squeeze out another turn here. Unless, of course, Alex, for example, found his one fireball. Attacking with both. Blocking the Suchi, taking the two, probably going to go down to four. Doesn't have to worry about a side blast. Both players not playing it. Untap up, keep draw. Ooh, there's the white mana. But I think that other last card in hand there for Roman is just a counter spell. That's a problem. So maybe he can have one last turn. I mean, of course he can trade. Does have a factory himself. Here we see a set stroll hitting the board. Are we going to see a counter spell? Yep, there's the counter magic. That makes perfect sense. Trying to stop, but now his hand is empty. 
He is going to animate, so playing aggressively. And he, he has to take a damage here and uh, block the factory. Going to drop to three. Ooh, there's a Shatter. That Shatter is unfortunate. He's doing that before blocks are declared so upon animation. So he's now on one. And he's killing himself. Yeah. Oh, he could have played. Oh, the Time Twist. The only way to make blue was that. Felt like he could have played the Time Twist or didn't he have the right mana? He probably had to tap the city for it. Anyway, even with that, he still would have been on one, which is, uh, yeah, not great against a deck that plays Lightning Bolts. Not great in general, of course, but especially against a deck with Bolts when you when you consider playing a Time Twister. Anyway, this was game number one. Wow, these players play uh, quite fast. I'm gonna, you know, take a moment to breathe in and out and then I will uh, catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So, of course, uh, Roman here still on the play after losing that first one. Looks like Alex has taken a mulligan here. Double mulligan even. Wow. Look at that going down to five. Starting here, Tropical Island into Soul Ring. And wow, Black Lotus. Look at this opener. Passing the turn, though. So we don't see a Sarah, for example, uh, turn one. There's a factory in just a pass. Disenchant there found by Roman. There's a City of Brass passing the turn, so we're maybe up for a completely different game. There's another factory, so Alex hasn't found any... Ooh, there's a Disenchant upon that attack. I wanted to say Alex hasn't found a single colored mana, just the factories, and now he's losing a factory. Already started on just five cards. It's looking very bad for him. Ooh, there's a Blood Moon from the sideboard. Batlands passing. There's a Mox Jet. And another land. Again, players playing very quick. Alex here. Oh, there's a Blood Moon. We're going to see a Counterspell, though. Taking care of it. It's taking a damage from his own City of Brass. So countered the Blood Moon away. I mean, Roman has so many mana sources. Look at that. There's a Factory. Could actually consider using the Factory. Perhaps on end step to prevent a double blue from Alex. There we see a Suchi from him hitting the board. Just one card left in hand for Roman, by the way. That is a Swords to Plowshare, so a quick Swords. That means Alex is going to go up to 24. And Roman now in top decking mode. So this is quite funny, right? Despite the fact that uh, Alex is the person who took a double mulligan, Roman only has one card left in hand. There we see a Setch Troll with regeneration mana open. Passing the turn back to Roman. Roman finding even more lands. Okay, it's nice, or mana sources, I should say. It's nice to find some mana, but this is a... A little bit ridiculous. He's on 15. And there's another Satch. So the start was really great for Roman, but now it's just not looking that uh, that fantastic anymore. It's going to tap 4. Ooh, Control Magic. That is a good move. So it has that Control Magic. It has, I believe, a Mox Jet to regenerate the, uh, the Satch. And he also has Black Mana, so it is a 3-3 three, three here. I believe he's got a Scrubland there. There's a Terror, though. That is a really good answer. So remember, Terror buries the creature, so you cannot regenerate it. There's the attack with the Sedge. Roman dropping to 12. I mean, has to find something. Like, Ancestral Recall would be quite great, or Brain Geyser. Here we see Argovian Pixies. Not that great against the Sedge. Great against the Artifacts, but not against that Sedge. Probably has to take more damage. You're going to drop to 9. Exactly. Doesn't want to chump yet. I mean, at least it prevents Alex here from attacking with his, with his factory. Oh, look at him go very aggressively. There is a uh, Mox. I mean, I believe... Does he have a factory there all between those in between those lands? I'm not quite sure. It does, of course, have the strip mine. So you could consider stripping the factory when he animates. I guess that's what I would do then. There's the attack. Could uh, pump it to a 3-3 as well with that extra factory. Okay, gonna tap 2. He's got a disenchant in hand. And okay, a divine offering. Unfortunately, it means no life gain from the divine. He is gonna take 3 though from the set. Dropping to 6, I believe. Yeah, this is tough. Roman needs something. He just drew so many mana sources. Like he had a, he had a very impressive start with the soaring and the Lotus. But... Just kept drawing lands and mocks, and after that couldn't find anything useful. And now he's in trouble. Another attack dropping to four. 
Oh, three even, of course. There's the bolt. Is this, is this game? Wow. <laughs> this went so fast. Like, these games went differently than I expected them to go. And a uh, man, oh man. I mean, sometimes you have these games, right? I mean, Roman just only found mana sources after already having quite like a mana source heavy hand, I guess. So yeah, it happens. Anyway, really nice to see these two players and see these two decks in action. Thank you, Alex and Roman. And I think if you're Alex, you're still in a very, very good position to make it in here uh, in the top eight. So maybe we're gonna see him back in a couple of weeks time in that top eight. Talking about that, if you don't wanna miss a thing about this tournament, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you very much for doing that. And before you go, please consider like uh, to like, share and comment on this uh, video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And uh, talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the information and you can already become a patron for just one dollar a month so if you enjoy the content that i make please consider becoming a patron like almost 200 other patrons have done before you talking about that let's go to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic amazing wunderbar patrons and channel members of timmy talks Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.